Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Oh, Hare Krishna, Maharaj. Oh, yeah, Hare Krishna, Prabhu. Okay. So we want to go on to chapter 13 tonight. We heard about the death of Vritasura, and now we're going to hear about Indra getting the sinful reactions. Sinful reactions for killing a Brahmana, right? Vritasura, although he was in the body of a demon, he was born the son of Twasta. Twasta was a Brahmana. And so, in that, that, that sense, Vritasura was a Brahmana. And of course, not only was he born in that Brahmana family, but he was a great devotee. He was the topmost Brahmana. He was a very pure Vaishnava, although he was in the body of a demon, and Indra had killed him. So Indra, after killing Vritasura, we will read what happens, but let's go through these verses. Uh, Sukadeva Goswami says, Indra was charitab charitably disposed when Vritasura was killed, all the presiding deities and everyone else in the three planetary systems was immediately pleased and free from trouble. Everyone, that is, except Indra. Now, Indra had killed Vritasura. All, everyone else was happy, but Indra was not happy. Why not? Because he had killed a great devotee. He killed someone who is the topmost brahmana. The devotees are the topmost brahmanas. And so this certainly affected Indra's consciousness and he has to suffer the sinful reactions for it. Of course, Indra was encouraged to kill the demon. He was even given instruction by the Lord himself. Lord Narayan had appeared to him and told him how he could kill Vritasura. The instructions came from the Lord. But still Indra had to get some reactions. He had to suffer the reactions for killing the Brahmana. Now previously he had killed Vishwarup. He killed Vishwarup. At that time he did it in a manner, you know, it was a, it was a, he, he did it without, without thinking very much about it. He did it, it was a, on the spur of the moment that when he saw that Vishwarup was offering oblations to the demons, on behalf of the demons, he became angry and he became worried about losing his position as king of heaven. So that was when he cut off the three heads of of uh, Vishwarup. So he got reactions for that, but that time he gave, a, he gave the sinful reactions away to other people. Remember, he gave, who did he give the sinful reactions to? Women, trees, water, and uh, land. Yes, good. Yes, he gave away the, the, the reactions to those four different things. Things. So that way he got relief for, from his sinful reactions. But this time it's more serious. It's more serious because he's, uh, he, he, he's, he's, he's doing it with the intent. You see, he, he had hesitated to kill, to, to, to kill Vritasura, but he'd been told that it's okay you can nullify the reactions, we'll do a yagya for you, we'll do a yagya to atone for your killing of the brahmana. So he was committing sin on the strength of the holy name. 
he was thinking that he, he would do some pious activity to counteract the sinful reactions. So that's very sinful. To commit sin on the strength of the holy name is a great sin. So Indra was, he got this kind of reaction. But at the same time, remember, Vritasura was a big demon and he was giving trouble to the universe. And he'd been told by the Lord how to kill him. And <laughs> so, but still he has to get some reaction. And we're told how he got the reactions. So the demigods, they were happy, they, they were telling Indra to kill the demon, but Indra had to do it and he gets the reaction. The so demigods, they were happy to see the demon dead, but Indra, he had to carry the reactions for it. All right, so... Nobody spoke to Indra. <laughs> Text number two. They, none of the demigods, they, they didn't even thank Indra. They, weren't, they, do, they were just happy. The demon's dead. Indra had to do all the dirty work for them. And they didn't even thank him. And so he was morose. He was unhappy. And so Maharaj Parikshit is asking Sukadeva Goswami in text number three, he said, what was the reason for Indra's unhappiness? I want to hear. And when he killed Vritasura, all the demigods were happy. Why then was Indra himself unhappy? And Prabhupada writes in the purport, therefore no one of real culture, therefore no, 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 and, and, therefore in terms of real culture, in terms of real culture, one should not be considered a demigod or demon simply according to birth. It's not the birth which is important, although birth is an advantage, but that's not the only criterion. And at the end of the purport, Prabhupada writes, a millionaire may very easily possess hundreds and thousands of dollars. But a person with hundreds and thousands of dollars is not necessarily a millionaire. Vridasura was a perfect Vaishnava and therefore he was also a Brahmana. Right? So a millionaire has hundreds and thousands of dollars. Somebody has hundreds of thousands of dollars. He's not, he may not have a million. He's not a million. But Vridasura he, he was a Vaishnava. So one who is a pure Vaishnava, he's also a Brahmana. He's a perfect Brahmana because he's a pure-hearted Vaishnava. Vaishnava is superior to the position of a Brahmana. And that's why they give the sacred thread to the devotees. Because one who is a devotee, he is also a Brahmana. So the, when, when it's seen the person is strictly following the regulated principles, then they're fit to be initiated as a Brahmana. And Prabhupada also said nowadays, he, he said, uh, Brahmanas should also study the scriptures. They shouldn't be ignorant. They shouldn't be illiterate. So we asked the devotees wanting second initiation, they should study Bhakti Shastri. They should have studied the Bhakti Shastri course. And that way they get some knowledge, they know something. And without studying the scriptures, they're not really Brahmanas. And the devotees, the topmost Brahmanas. We've got different kinds of Brahmanas. Some Brahmanas are just Jati Brahmanas, Brahmanas by birth. They don't know anything, they don't follow anything. And you've got Brahmana Pandits, they know some scriptures and so on, but they're not devotees. And we have Vaishnava Brahmins, Vaishnava Brahmin, devotee Brahmins. This is the real Brahmana. So Sukadeva Goswami is replying to Maharaj Parikshit's questions. Everybody was happy. 
seeing the death of Ritasura. They'd asked Indra to kill him, and Indra had done it. Indra replied, when I killed Vit Vritasura, I received, that, that's pre, when I killed Vishwarup, I received extensive sinful reactions. But I was favored. I gave my sinful reactions to the women, land, to the trees, and to the water. And so I was able to divide the sins among them. Now I've killed Vritasura, another Brahmana, how shall I free myself from the sinful reactions? It was more serious. Sukadeva Goswami said, hearing this, the great sages replied to Indra, O King of Heaven, do not fear. We shall perform an Ashwamedha sacrifice to release you from any sin you may accrue by killing the Brahmana. See, they were thinking they'll do an Ashwamedha Yajna and then this way get rid of the sins. That is very bad to think like that, to do sinful activities and nullify it by killing the, by doing pious activity. You can't do that. But anyway, the, the Rishis are talk, telling like this to Indra, by performing the Asman, Aswamedha Yajna, you please the Supreme Lord who is a super soul. And it says, one can be relieved even of the sinful reactions for killing the entire world, not to speak of killing a demon like Vritasura. So that's, do the Aswamedha Yajna, very powerful. But still, you have to worry about that he'd done this sinful thing. He wasn't an ordinary demon, he was a great devotee, So the sages continue, one who has killed a brahmana, or one who has killed a cow, or one who has killed his father, mother, or spiritual master, they can all be freed from all sinful reactions simply by chanting the holy name of Lord Narayan. <laughs> do you get that? Do you hear that? Just chant the name of Lord Narayan and get free. You, do, you can do any killing all these people. Is it true? No, of course not. That is committing sin on the strength of the holy name. Very bad to think like that. Anyway, they're telling Indra like this, you know, he was a demon, he was disturbing the whole universe, so you don't have to worry about it. <laughs> so we'll read a little bit here from Prabhupada's purport. Uh, this means that by, by once chanting the holy name of the Lord, one can be freed from the reactions of more sins than he has committed or than he can imagine performing. What then is to be said of those who chant the holy name regularly or worship the deity regularly? For such, purified, for such purified devotees, freedom from sinful reactions is certainly assured. The Lord's holy name certainly has the potency to neutralize all sinful activities. But if one repeatedly and intentionally commits sins while chanting the holy name, he is most condemned. So this is important points here. You cannot just simply do these things, take advantage of the holy name to do sinful activities. It's, that's very sinful. Thank you. So uh, then again, you get the verse, Sukadeva Goswami's verse from his prayers in the second canto that the power of the devotee can deliver one from all sins. Even sinful persons can certainly be purified if they chant the holy name of the Lord under the direction 
of pure devotees. So that's the point. You need the association, you need to be guided by pure devotees to learn when to chant and why you can chant and why you should chant. Not that you can do sinful activities and counteract the karma by chanting the holy name. Such purpose, purposefully devised atonement, however, cannot relieve the performer of sinful acts. This will be seen from the following verse. Sukadeva Goswami said, Encouraged by the words of the sages, Indra killed Vritasura. And when he was killed, the sinful reactions for killing the Brahmana certainly took shelter of Indra. You cannot expect you can do sins and get away from it, get away with it. Hmm. Formerly, he had killed one Brahmana, Vishwarup, out of circumstantial anger. But this time, following the advice of the sages, he killed another Brahmana purposefully. Therefore, the sinful reaction was greater than before. And later on in the purport, the planned execution of sinful deeds on the strength of chanting the holy name of the Lord or undergoing prayaschit, atonement, cannot give relief to anyone, even to Indra or Nahusha. Nahusha had taken the place of Indra. Nahusha is also a demigod. And when Indra was absent, Nahusha took his place. But he also got in trouble. So, following the advice of the demigods, Indra killed Vritasura. And he suffered because of his sinful killing. Although the other demigods were happy, he could not derive happiness from the killing of Vritasura. Indra's, Indra's other good qualities, such as tolerance and opulence, could not help him in this grief. One cannot be happy by committing sinful acts, even if one is endowed with material opulences. So there are many examples like that. People who have a lot of power and opulence, they do sinful things, they cannot be happy. And it happened, Indra is chased by the sinful reactions. The sinful reactions appear before him like a chandala woman a woman of the lowest class and she was very old and the limbs of her body were trembling and she had tuberculosis and her body, her body garments were all covered with blood. People with tuberculosis often they would spit up blood and the blood oozing from the different sores on their body and breathing was unbearable fishy smell, polluted the whole atmosphere and she was calling out to Indra, wait, wait. So Indra saw her, he could understand she is the personification of this sinful activity. He ran. He went to the sky, but she came there, and wherever he went, she was there. At last, he went over to the Manasa Sarova Lake. And he went to the Manasa Sarova Lake, and there he hid in the fiber of a lotus flower. And he remained in the fiber of the lotus flower for 1,000 years in the subtle fibers of the stem of a lotus. 
At that time, the demigod Agni used to send some foodstuffs for his share from the yagya. But because the fire god, the fire god cannot go near water, could not enter the water. So Indra was not able to get much food. And so Indra was practically starving. So this is a difficulty which he had to undergo as a result of killing a brahmana. Because he did it purposefully with the thinking that he could atone for it by doing yajna. And while he was away, at that time Nahusha took his position. And Nahusha became also blinded by the opulence, by, by the power, and he made propositions to Indra's wife. And later on Nahusha also got reactions, he became a snake. That was the result of his sins. So Nahusha had to suffer for his pride, for his foolishness, because of his lust to enjoy another person's wife, makes life, he had to become a snake. All right, so Indra, Indra was in the, 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 this fiber of the lotus for a, a thousand years, but during that time he was protected by the goddess of fortune, who is Lord Vishnu's wife. And she resides in the in the in, in this the, that uh, lotus cluster at Manasa Sarova. So in this way, Indra was protected, and Indra's sins could not affect him. Indra was ultimately relieved of all the reactions of his sinful deeds by strictly worshipping Lord Vishnu. And then he was called back to the heavenly planets by the brahmanas and reinstated in his position. So this is how Indra finally got relieved from his sinful reactions. But initially he had to suffer, he had to take the reactions. But he was fortunate because he was able to take shelter of the goddess of fortune at the Manasa Sarova lake. But still he had to spend time there. And then after undergoing the austerity there for 1,000 years, then he was able, only then he was able to go and take up devotional service to worship the Supreme Lord. And he had to worship the Supreme Lord very carefully, very seriously. And this way he got relieved of all of his sinful reactions by the worship of Lord Vishnu. And so he was called back to heaven. And when he went back to heaven, then the brahmanas approached him and they initiated him into a horse sacrifice. They did the Ashwamedha Yajna to give pleasure to the Supreme Lord. Yajna is meant for the pleasure of Vishnu. So they, they performed the Ashwamedha Yajna and this way Indra was relieved of all of his sins because he had worshipped the Supreme Lord in that sacrifice. And Sukadeva Goswami says, although he had committed a gravely sinful act, it was nullified at once by that, sacri by that sacrifice, just as fog is vanished by the brilliant sun sunrise. Okay, and then text 21, King Indra was favored by Marichi and the other great sages. They performed the sacrifice just according to the rules and regulations, worshipping the Supreme Personality of Godhead, the Super Soul, the original person. Thus Indra regained his position and was again honored 
by everyone. All right? So we hear what happened. In this very great narrative, there is glorification of the Supreme Personality of Godhead, Narayan. There are statements about the exaltedness of devotional service. There are descriptions of devotees like Indra and Vritasura, and, uh, and there are statements about King Indra's release from sinful life about his victory in fighting the demons. By understanding this incident, one is relieved of all sinful reactions. Therefore, the learned are always advised to read this narration. If one does so, one will become expert in the activities of his senses. His opulence will increase and his reputation will become widespread. One will also be relieved of all sinful reactions. He will conquer all his enemies, and the duration of his life will increase, because this narration is auspicious in all respects. Learned scholars regularly hear and repeat it on every festival day. So these are the wonderful benedictions which are offered to devotees for hearing and repeating this wonderful pastime of the appearance of Vritasura and how Indra kills Vritasura and how Vritasura goes back to Godhead and then finally how Indra becomes relieved of his sinful reactions. All right, so we have a couple of hands up here. Yeah, is it? Prabhu, you have your hand up, is it? Huh? Yes, Bill. Yes, Maharaj. Yeah. Maharaj, uh, you said that a millionaire is having uh, hundreds and thousands of dollars, but uh, another person having hundreds and thousands of dollars may not be a millionaire. That I couldn't understand, Maharaj. Well, a millionaire has more than, a hundred, than hundreds of thousands of dollars. He has thousands of thousands of dollars, right? Yes, Maharaj. Hundreds, <laughs> hundreds and thousands of dollars is not equal to a million. So the mil millionaire has got more than hundreds of thousands of dollars. In the same way, a Vaishnava is greater than a Brahmana. So one who is a Vaishnava, if he's a real Vaishnava, he's automatically a Brahmana. Prabhupada is giving this example. Just like we could give it another way. One who has a hundred dollars, he also has fifty dollars and twenty dollars. But if you have fifty dollars, you don't have a hundred dollars. You only have fifty dollars. So it's it's the same thing. Somebody has hundreds and thousands of dollars, but it's not millions. Somebody who has millions, he has more than hundreds and thousands of dollars. The so one who is a Vaishnava, he is automatically a Brahmana. But one may be a Brahmana, he is not necessarily a Vaishnava. And Prabhupada said, not easy thing to be a Vaishnava. Is it clear? Yes, Mother. Thank you, Mother. Yes, Prabhu. Another hand is up there. Uh, yes, Maharaj. Uh, Maharaj, Bob. the offense committed uh, upon the lotus feet of Vaishnava is a great offense that we had studied from different Shastri injunctions that Vaishnava cannot be mitigated, cannot be resolved by way of atonement or by way of any pious activities, even like Asumat Jagyam, because that is like, uh, like uh, uh, Madhva Matta means uh, an elephant. Uh, when an elephant enters, after taking bath, 
he again uh, spreads sands over his body and uh, his batting is meaningless. Similarly, Vaishnava Abhuradi is a very uh, great, uh, unsurmountable offense. But how Indra, just by uh, simply um, sincerely worshipping Lord Vishnu, resolved the uh, problem of Vaishnava Abhuradi? Uh, well, you have to understand the whole situation that Indra was also encouraged to kill Vritasura. The Lord had personally told him how to do it. He told him, you want to kill this demon? You have to get the bones from the Dichi and make a weapon, then you can use that to kill him. So the Lord was aware that this Vritasura has to be killed. So Indra was given the job to kill. At the same time, you kill a Brahmana, you get reactions. So Indra showed also, he got reactions for killing that Brahmana. He had to suffer, he had to do, he had to go away to Manasarova Lake, be in the stem of the lotus for a thousand years, could not get, he's practically starving and hunger, could not get his share of sacrifice. He, he went, underwent all that austerity because of just to atone for purifying. But he'd been told to kill. The, the, all the demigods had been telling him, and the Lord had told him how to kill the demon. So, yeah, yeah, it certainly, uh, the, uh, Indra was, in some ways, he, he, why he should be held responsible. He was the, the king of heaven, he was doing his job. But still, because he was a brahmana, because he was fighting a brahmana and he killed a brahmana, he, he had to suffer, he had to get some reactions. And so it wasn't just simply so straightforward that he just worshipped the Lord. But worship of the Lord is, of course, ultimately very powerful. And when he did worship the Lord, then he was able to get relief from the reactions. Right? Not... Uh, but Maharaj, yeah. Uh, in Amrish Maharaj's first times, uh, Durbasa then apologized from Amrits Maharaj, Lord Vishnu refused him. That's a uh, burning example to learn and understand that Vaishnava Prabhupada cannot be, cannot be de-offended, that means cannot be resolved. But uh, because this story is quite different, so it is understood in a different way, but still my doubt is... What should the... Uh... Um, because once it is uh, strictly stated that unless one apologizes from the Vaishnava, so the Vaishnava Aparat cannot be, cannot be, uh, yeah, solved. So here, Vrithasu is dead, he had already gone to the spiritual world, so apologizing is also not possible. So, solution is that if one will sincerely worship Vishnu, so this problem can be solved. Yes. Yeah, certainly take shelter of Lord Vishnu solves all the problems. As you said, you know, we could say that Indra never even actually killed Vritasura. Vritasura was sitting, well, he was sitting in trance. He had entered into samadhi. And at that time only, then Indra came out from his body. And then he killed him. But, but you could say, well, had he already gone back to Godhead? I, maybe not. No, it, says, it seems to say that in, in the presence of all the demigods, they saw the soul leave the body and go to the spiritual world to become an associate of Lord Sankarshan. But did that, did that, and it says, it seems to say that happened after Indra come, came out and cut off his head.
but it could be also that you know that while he was still in trance that he'd al already left the body and gone back to godhead just like maharaj parikshit was hearing srimad bhagavatam and then he sat in trance and then tarksha the snake bird came to bite him but maharaj parikshit was already in samadhi had already gone back to godhead and they just killed the dead body Now Dronacharya, also Dronacharya stopped fighting, he sat down, he put, went into Samadhi. Then they came and killed him. Yes, Maharaj, thank you very much. Definitely sinful reactions, but still, the, the, uh, although, although Vritasura was dead, and still he enters getting sinful reactions. So, it, it must be, there must be some message there for us, because it's, it's in Prabhupada writes, his offense was greater. Previously he killed Vrita Sura, it was in the spur of the moment, you know, it was a very quick thing, without deliberation. But here, he's killing uh, Vrita Sura and it's with the, the, the thinking is that he will kill Vrita Sura and then atone for it by performing some sacrifice. So that was wrong. To think that he could do that and then atone for it by performing yajna. That kind of mentality is very condemned. So that's why he got the sinful reactions. But the austerities and the, he, he underwent the purification and then he, he worshipped the Lord after being in the stem of the lotus for a thousand years. Then he worshipped the Lord very intensely and then he did, only then he was able to do Ashwamedha Yajna. Because without purifying himself, they couldn't do the Ashwamedha Yajna. He couldn't go there with all, you know, as a sinful person, he couldn't just go there and do Ashwamedha Yajna. Yes, Prabhu? This is Maharaj, this is fine. So, Maharaj, suppose one devotee uh, incidentally kills a Vaishnav and Vaishnav immediately dies. So, can this rule be applicable to him? Somebody kills a Vaishnava? Uh, Vaishnava incidentally dies, suppose. So, there is no scope of apologizing from him. So, in what way he will reinstate himself? in devotional journey? Well, he has to undergo some atonement. He has to, he has to accept some atonement for purification. He has to chant the holy name constantly. He has to beg for the mercy of devotees. He has to just completely submit himself to the holy name and, and cry for his offence. Yeah, difficult to be relieved for killing a devotee. How do you get relief from that? It can, you can get relief, but you, you have to have that, you, you, we have to consider what is the mentality. Did he just spontaneously kill it and without, he wasn't thinking, but it just, out of the circumstances arose, but suddenly there was a, a argument, a disagreement, and he ended up killing someone? Or was it all premeditated and planned and that I will kill someone and then I'll chant the holy name to make up for it? You have to consider the circumstances. See, Indra's circumstances were quite different, that he's been 
told by people to kill the demon. And then they're telling him, we will do the yagya to, so that you don't get sinful reactions. But still, personified sin came there. After so he, he had to, he couldn't immediately just go and do the Ashwamedha yagya. Mm -hmm. Okay, I think Krishna Prabhu. Uh, yes, Maharaj Ji, Dhanu Pranam. Uh, Maharaj, in the last uh, translation, uh, when, where all the benedictions are given after reading this uh, incidents, uh, one line states that uh, one will become expert in the activities of the senses. So, I didn't understand its meaning, Maharaj Ji. Where is it? Uh, in the translation of this last verse, uh, on the screen we can see, uh, yes, this, this verse, uh, the benedictions are given after reading the incidents. One of the benedictions is, uh, if one does so, one will become expert in the activities of the senses. One will Eighth become line. expert in what? In the activities of the senses. Oh, yeah. What is the meaning, Maharaj? I didn't understood it. Didn't understand. Mm, well, uh, in sense, sense notification. Uh -huh. Okay. Yeah, I see now. All right. If one does not, if one does so, the learners should, are always advised to read this narration. If one does so. One will become expert in the activities of the senses. Well, what does it mean to be expert in the activities of the senses? It means you use your senses in the service of Krishna. The activities of the senses, we, we use our eyes to see. So we will see the scriptures, you can read the scriptures. You, you can use your ears for hearing the glories of the Lord. You can use your tongue for chanting the names of the Lord. We use our legs to walk to the holy places. So the activities of the senses should be used not for our own sense gratification, but for the pleasure of the Lord. That is the perfection of our senses. The senses belong to the Lord. They're meant for His service. So one who is expert in the activities of the senses he will be careful to use his senses for the pleasure of the Supreme Lord. Have you, yes. got, have you got it? Yes, Maharaj. So, uh, we'll become very materially uh, qualified and, and a devotee will use all these things in the service of the Lord. Yes, can do. That these, sometimes these kind of statements are made just to encourage people who are not very devoted. You see, sometimes these kind of benedictions are offered and they will encourage the more uh, neophyte devotee, the more devotees who are more on the material platform. So these kind of benedictions will encourage them. And of course, if they will take and they, if they do read and chant this pastime, they'll become more and more detached from all these desires. So we have yes, the, we have these kind of desires. They're also offered in the worship of Lord Damodar during the month of Kartik, during Damodar Puja. We're told how worshiping Lord Damodar also will destroy a lot of sins and gives up a lot of benedictions and blessings. So these things are, they're not really for devotees, one who is a more advanced devotee is not interested in these things. He knows that's not real happiness. But these benedictions are offered just to encourage people who are not so advanced, not so fixed in pure devotion. Mm -hmm. Yes, ma'am. All right, any other question there? Did you write an essay on this unit yet? Did you get a topic to write an essay on? Yes, 
is Maharaj. There are three essays, understanding, teaching application, personal application. No, yeah. How many, essays, how many essays do you have to write? Usually. One. Oh, what is it? We, we pick one and you all have to write that one or do you... Anyway, I have, we have to talk to whoever is coordinating this unit. What's his name again? Parthasarati Mohan Prabhu. Parthasarati Mohan. So he's not here tonight, is he? No, he's not here, Maharaj. Okay, so maybe somebody should get in touch with him and ask him about what essay you're supposed to write. Do you, can you pick one of the three or are you, are you told which one to write on? But as to usually we are writing one essay per unit. One essay per unit. But do you all write on the same topic? Topic uh, we have to select. Okay, well, I have to, I have to, we have to check with him. I want to make sure that that's right, that you want to do it that way. We don't want you wasting your time. If he says do it one way and then you come along and do it another way, then it will be a problem. So anyway, tomorrow, tomorrow morning, somebody, or tonight even, somebody can check with him and ask him what... Uh, huh? Yes, Maharaj, yes. Yeah. All right, and, and then tomorrow we'll go on to chapter number 14 about King Chitraketu's lamentation. Maybe you could just read out the essay. What, is that? what are the three essay topics? What's the first one? Mother, the essay topics, essay for unit 26 is the three essays, as I said. Hmm? One is understanding with reference to uh, Srimad Bhagavatam 6.7.124, dark through general principles for Indra's offending, uh, Brihaspati and the demons worshipping Sukracharya, discuss the relevance of these principles for Iskan devotees. Bri and, uh, Brihaspati and Sukracharya. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, the difference between the demons and the demigods. So the demigods had insulted their guru, and because they'd insulted their guru, they lost everything. But the demons, although they were demons, they were victorious because they were very faithful to the instructions of Sukracharya. Okay, yes. And then what's the second essay? The second essay is preaching application from uh, Srimad Bhagavatam, Canto 6, chapters 11-12 draw to general principles from the incidents and discussions between Indra and Vitrasira, present the relevance of these principles for preaching today. Oh, the in, the in, this discussion between Vritasura and Indra, where Vritasura is talking about doing your duty and don't be attached to the results. Okay. Is it? Present the relevance of these principles for devotees for, today. For preaching today, preaching application. Yes, very important in our preaching. We have to be dependent on Krishna. We're not the doer. We simply in, endeavor for the service of Krishna. I gave the example, Lord Nityananda and Haridas, they were not successful. Don't be attached to the results. Just try to do our preaching and depend on Krishna for the results. But what example, Maharaj, you gave Haridas? As in Nityananda and Haridas went to Jaga and Madhai, they were not successful. The first attempt. And they came back again, and Lord Nityananda got struck on the head. And Haridas was chanting the holy name. And he got whipped in mar 22 marketplaces for chanting the holy name, for becoming a devotee. And Lord Jesus Christ was crucified 
They accepted so much difficulties. They didn't give up and they didn't have bitter feelings. They continued their worship despite the hardships. What's the final, the third question? And it was a personal application with reference to Srimad Bhagavatam 6.10.214. Draw to general principles from Dadichi Muni's leaving his body. Oh. Okay, the Dichimani leaving his body principles. And so that was, that's a very nice section, the Dichimani giving up his body. And Prabhupada talks about how even young people today they're encouraged to sacrifice their lives for the service of the Krishna consciousness movement. Just like the Dichi sacrificed his life for the demigods, for some higher purpose. The Dichi, the Dichi was detached. He said, the body will, will have to give it up one day anyway, so I might as well give it up for a good cause. Let the body be used for some good purpose. So let me give up the body. And so he, the, the, his thinking, he wanted to do good for others. The, what, his compassionate and kind, caring, even the demigods. And detached, that vairagya. So these kind of principles there, compassion and detachment, these are some of the principles of Dadichi. And these are very important qualities today for devotees. And we are encouraged to follow the example of Dadichi. Use our life for the service of the Krishna consciousness movement. Help people to become self-realized. This is the Krishna consciousness is the highest welfare work. Okay, so those are the three kind of essays, you know, nice questions. I don't know which one you have to write on, we'll find out. And maybe, who's going to ask, uh, who's going to ask, what's his name, Partha Sarati? I will, I will definitely ask, I will ask Mahars. Yeah, ask, ask him, is it, is, is it one or is it? Can we pick any one or do we have to pick, do we just have to write on one particular essay? Or, I don't know, maybe he doesn't want an essay for this unit. Maybe wait, wait till you do the next unit. You have to ask him. Anyway, tomorrow we'll begin the next unit, right? Chapter 14. We'll go on and hear chapter 14. We have five more classes to do in the next unit to finish the everything about Chitraketu and how he got cursed. All right, any other question? Okay, so we'll meet you tomorrow night. Thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Srila Prabhupada Ki Jai. Yeah.